Number one asks us to identify any angles of rotation that create symmetry. Um, so in number one, if we're going to look at the colors as being different, then number one has none. However, if we're going to ignore the colors and just pretend it didn't matter if white landed on black, if that were the case, then you could have a 180 degree rotation um, because this would produce a rotational symmetry because then the circle would land on the circle. Um, but if you're looking at the colors, then I would say that there are none in this one. For the middle one, um, we could do 180 degree rotation. So if you kind of thought about here, let me get this as a dotted line. So if you kind of thought about um, this, if we just looked at it, we could see if we did this as the center, if we did a 180 degree rotation, this point would go over to here and this would continue. So we would have 180 degree rotational symmetry around that center. And then um, this last one looks like it's kind of got three main peaks happening here. So if we look at this center, um, we could rotate this knee over to this one. And then we could rotate this knee over to this one. So that kind of looks like there's three different chunks here. So we would take a full rotation as 360 divided by three, and we would end up with every 120 degrees there's symmetry. Um, so we would say 120, and then we would also say 240. So this would be 120, this would be 240, and then it would be back to 360, which does not count as a rotational symmetry angle. Number two, a triangle has rotation symmetry that can take any of its vertices um, to any of the other vertices. So every vertice can end up going, um, being rotated onto the next. So select all the conclusions we can reach from this. So if we can rotate it back on itself and each vertex can land on each other, um, that means that the vertices must be equally spaced for them to land on top of each other. And the angles must have the same measure. But it would not mean that half the triangle would end up on the other half. Number three, select all angles of rotation that produce um, symmetry for this flower. So if we take a look, you can kind of see there's four distinct areas here because of these petals. So we would want to rotate this petal around onto this one and then around onto this one and then around onto this one and then it would be back. So we'd be looking at 360 divided by four. So every 90 degrees, there's going to be rotational symmetry. So not at 45 because then this peak would end up here and that wouldn't be good. So at 90, not at 135, at 180, not at 225, and then at 270. So this would be the 90, and then to here would be 180, and then all the way to here would be the 270. Identify any lines of symmetry that this figure has. So we kind of see two distinct parts here. Um, kind of a top half and bottom half are the same and left and right are the same. Um, but beyond that, really nothing. So this is going to be a line of symmetry that's horizontal and a line of symmetry that's vertical, both through the center. So they both have to go through that center. Number five, a triangle has a line of symmetry. So one line of symmetry. Select all conclusions that must be true. So there is only one line of symmetry here. So all sides of the triangle have the same length. This would not be true because if that were the case, then this would have symmetry uh, more than one because you would have this one to land on, on itself over there. You could fold it this way and you could fold it this way. So all of the sides cannot be equal, and therefore all of the angles cannot be equal as well, or there would be more symmetry. 
no sides of the triangle has have the same length. Well, that can't be true if it's going to fold over on itself. By definition, line of symmetry means it's going to fold over on itself. So it has to have something that's the same. Okay, so this would not be true. Um, which means same thing about the angles for the same reason. So two sides of the triangle must be the same. So this would be true. So if we had a triangle like this, an isosceles triangle, we would get one line of symmetry there. So then this side would be equal to this side, so it would land on, on it. And then two angles, this angle would have to be equal to this angle so that it landed on it. Number six, here are four triangles that each have been transformed by a different transformation. Which one is not a rigid transformation? So remember, rigid transformations stay the same size. So we're looking for a size change, which would be A. Okay, then finally, number seven, we're going to match these vectors to the translations. Remember that we are moving um, triangle P onto triangle Q. So we want to start the vector at P and have the arrow go towards Q. So for this one, P should be below and then up and to the left should be Q. So we can match that one to translation number four. And wherever you want to write this in your book, if you want to write number four next to A or by translation number um, four, you want to write A. Um, and then B is going down and to the right. So we want to see P um, above Q and then Q is going to be down and to the right. So we see that in both three and two, but two has the correct kind of angle. So B goes with number two. And then down into the right, or sorry, down into the left again. So number three um, goes with C. And that leaves um, D to go with number one. So starting on P, ending on Q.